Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Happy Project Podcast. I was trying out a little jingle.、Um, I wish we could have a jingle, you know?、Mm. You know, some people have like, what are some jingles?、Um, it's all inside. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs>、um, yeah, I don't know the jingles, but people have some nice jingles. Are jingles、right? still a thing? Jingles are a thingle. <laughs> oh my God. And. I feel like we deserve one as well. <laughs> Is your skin crawling? I'm just shaking my head. Just... <laughs> yeah, my skin's crawling a little bit. I can't believe that came out of my mouth. But I want a jingle. I wish we could have something nice and catchy. You know, when people are, when they hear, oh, the Happy Project podcast, instead of hearing the Happy Project podcast, they're hearing the Happy Project podcast or something like that. Yeah, maybe there's some musicians out there, some songwriters. The Happy Project Podcast. Throw a little something together. The Happy Project Podcast. It's got to be out there. I can feel it、mm, somewhere. I think it's out there. It's out there. Out there. This is turning into a musical number. Well, today we're not talking about music or jingles or musicals. We are talking a little bit about how moving to Korea changed the way. We view ourselves, our self perceptions, if you will. And it is a funny topic to think about self perception, self awareness, because I feel like I feel like self awareness grows without you being aware until one day you realize, whoa, I'm, I'm very aware. aware. <laughs> I'm aware of myself. Wow, that happened without being aware. But then、mm-hmm. you make decisions based on that self awareness, which hopefully add to more. Determined decisions or more disciplined choices or just more thoughtful things. Yeah. Yeah. And so, perceptions, our perceptions of ourselves, becoming more aware of ourselves, how we think about ourselves, how did that change since coming to Korea? And that's kind of what we're going to talk about. Well, I think maybe we should just give a brief background on how we came to Korea. What was it that led us here to Korea? Maybe you can go. Well, I was a little. Black and Korean boy growing up in the South. <laughs> and I've been exposed to many different cultures growing up, but、uh, that was because I grew up in a military town. So、mm-hmm. I spent most of my life in North Carolina. And there was a small Korean population there.、Uh, a lot of people growing up in the church,、uh, like the Korean American church,、uh, was sort of the Korean community that I was surrounded by. Um, and so I think that was really my,、uh, the most, I guess, access to Korean culture that、mm-hmm. I knew of outside of my mom and outside of the home. So、uh, that, was, that was pretty much what I knew. I knew、uh, America that I grew up in, I knew、uh, my school and stuff like that. But then my church life and my mom's friends was sort of the Korean culture that I grew up with. And、uh, I think I always had this curiosity of, What would it be like to actually live in Korea?、Mm-hmm. Even when I was a kid, I remember I used to watch、uh, different like dramas in the 90s, and this is when they were on VHS tapes. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is way before the internet. And I would watch them really when my mom would watch them, and I'd be like, wow, that's like a whole nother world. And I knew that deep down inside, because I was also Korean, that I felt like I'm probably missing a part of who I am,、mm-hmm. even as a kid. Like, I, I sort of subconsciously had that feeling.、Hmm. And so that curiosity never left me. So I grew up in high school、um, and in college, just wondering, oh, it'd be cool to live in Korea. I wonder what it would be like. And, you know, I went through periods of times where、uh, I was like, you know what, I'm going to move to Korea one day. And then sometimes a couple of years would pass and I'm just like working, doing my own thing. And I'm like, oh, whatever, you know, I'm enjoying my life here. But then, like, In my mid 20s, I was like, you know, I'm never gonna have this opportunity to, to be able to move to Korea, but there's this opportunity that I'm hearing about that you can go over and teach English and、uh, pretty much live in Korea. And so I was like, this is my only opportunity because if I don't do it now, I will likely get married and settle down in the States. And so I was like, okay, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I did it. And you did it. <laughs> yeah. Just like someone else person says with a jingle, just do it. 
Is that a jingle? No, that's Nike. It's a logo. It's a slogan. It's a slogan. It's a slogo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah. I mean, my story was very like, I, I obviously only told like 0.5% of it because、yeah. I don't know how to sum up my whole life. I know. You can check out his、minutes. video on the Sky City YouTube channel、yeah. where you really can watch the whole story. For sure. For sure. Yeah. But I mean, that was a long short of it. I just grew up. In America, in a multicultural household, always wondered what it would be like to move to Korea. Finally had the opportunity and the guts to do it、mm-hmm. in my mid 20s. But I ended up moving here five years later、yeah. in my early 30s. And here you are today. Yeah, three years after. Seated right here. here. Okay, our stories do converge at some point. So let me then summarize mine whoop, to the point to today. So I also grew up in a military family. We moved around an awful lot. And so my sense of community was not with. Friends or schoolmates or the town or city. No affinity for anything like that. But it was primarily just my family, like my little family pod.、Um, I never really thought to myself, oh, I'm Korean. But I also never thought to myself, oh, I'm, I'm white, American. Those concepts were just, it was just part of who we were. So、mm-hmm. I, I didn't really you know, think about that actively until maybe when I was nine. That's when I started realizing kids were making fun of me for how I looked. So, starting there and moving around all the time, and very little bit here and there recognizing, oh gosh, I'm not really seen as a Korean person. Gosh, I'm, not, I'm definitely not seen as a white American either. And、um, it's like incidents here and there, but nothing really bothered me too much until I hit high school when I really recognized, okay, there's definitely separation happening between me and some other Korean kids here. University, I came to study in Korea, and、uh, that further intensified this sense of isolation, I think, and、uh, prompted more of this search of self and Korean culture and where do I belong or fit into this? Do I? Can I ever be accepted? Okay, well, let's ask those questions. And、uh, I finished school. I decided to live in Korea、um, just for a short amount of time, but I have ended up staying here for a number of years. And now I am here today doing exactly those things I was wondering about before through the Happy Project.、Mm-hmm. So clearly, I, I have had the,、um, let's just say, the determination and also the privilege to be able to invest so much time. In, in self exploration and studying my own heritage here in Korea, which not everyone is fortunate enough to do that. I'm aware of it. And so I think the way that we perceive ourselves through our own stories, through these experiences, of course, is going to be very different to how other people perceive themselves in the context of being mixed. So、um, that is the long story short of my story. Julia s a w Yeah, that was much better than how I put my story. No, no, Mine no. Mine was very just like fact, fact, fact. Yours, Yours was is like great. Very emotional. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well,、uh, now we see a little bit about how we thought about ourselves before. I mean, I know for me, I just, I was just this spiky, skinny kid who looked a little bit like Gollum because I didn't have any hair or teeth. And <laughs> look, you guys don't see the photos, but it's true. It's true. I saw the photos.、Yeah. I will neither confirm nor deny. That's a safe spot right there in the <laughs> middle ground.、Uh, yeah. And so I, I,、uh, I think also like internally with family dynamics too, that greatly impacted the way that I viewed myself. So I think primarily, more than anything, I didn't consider myself part of a culture, I didn't per- perceive myself as part of a country. I wasn't part of this or that. I was simply me, 100% me, and I did what me wanted to do. And so、um, I don't think I ever you know, described myself in terms of race or culture whatsoever、mm. until I hit high school. And that's where my self awareness was more growing because of how other people viewed me. So it was kind of like a mirror reflection, I suppose. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's the same for me. That's when I really started to distinguish hey, I have two cultures that I can represent. And I remember I went through periods of time, and、uh, I think it was. I think it was a junior in high school. That was when、uh, Be the Reds, like the whole、uh, World Cup thing was going on,、oh, where、yeah. Korea went to the World Cup. Yeah. And I remember during that time, like, I was just like, I got to represent Korea. I got to represent that side of me. 
and this is who I am. You know what I mean? Uh, whereas in, in middle school, I didn't have that because I was just like, whatever, I'm just living my life. My parents and the dynamics of growing up in a mixed household was normal to me. I didn't think that was not normal compared to most of the people in my surroundings. Right. So that's yeah. why I was just like, oh, it's whatever. Yeah. I yeah. think a lot of times people who are, um, I think, categorized or described by outside communities according to their race and heritage become more aware of this a lot sooner. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're constantly defined as, oh, the Asian girl over there, or, um, oh, you haven't met Becky? Oh, yeah, she's that Korean girl, right? When you're constantly defined by that descriptor, um, it becomes, you start to become aware of that. I think a lot sooner. Yeah, you realize you're different and people view you differently. Yeah, absolutely. And now um, having this kind of self-awareness or self-perception or the way you're perceived is obviously greatly impacted by those around you, the community around you. Just as we were saying, hearing it, what other people say about me, they look at me from a third person perspective and they see something else that I didn't think about that in myself you are greatly impacted by which community and context that you're in. So we spent, you know, the majority of our youth and also our 20s. I guess not my 20s, huh? Your no, 20s. Most of your 20s were here. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's weird to think about. Um, but at a very, let's say, um, important stages of our lives, surrounded by people who viewed us as not really part of the pack, right? I guess we can safely put it that way. And that's not necessarily in a negative sense. It's not like people were, you know, putting us down. But it's just this awareness like, oh, okay, all right. Not blending in. That's cool. Okay, let me find my place. Then coming to Korea at a stage where we've already started having this kind of self-awareness going on and then plucked out of that community and put into this community. How has that, the context, how has it changed the way you view yourself? I don't know. I'm still trying to figure that out. I mean, I... I feel like I had certain expectations of how I would view myself right before I moved. I felt like I would fit in a lot more than I do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I felt like, you know, I knew that I needed to definitely brush up on my Korean language to be able to communicate as a native Korean. I knew that coming in, but I thought besides that, and besides the initial, I guess, shock factor when people meet me and realize I'm half Korean, I thought that I would sort of be able to blend in a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. And I think now that perception has changed because I'm like, I feel like I don't blend in at all. Like every single day I am aware of my otherness, mm -hmm. which is, um, you know, I don't know if a lot of half Koreans deal with that who are living in Korea, but I realized that because I'll catch myself just thinking subconsciously, like, what, what is this person? This person looks at me like a foreigner mm -hmm. or this person thinks I'm not one of them. Mm -hmm. Like, a perfect example is in the gym. Like, every day, I, I sort of had this subconscious thought. And I don't, and I'm not like negative or sad about it most of the time. It's just like, it's just a thought. And it's just an awareness like, oh, I, I know I look different. Mm -hmm. No one knows I'm half Korean. Mm -hmm. uh, so I... I know now and I perceive myself as different because of that thought, I think. Mm -hmm. And because I know I, I'm looked at that way. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, so I think that's one way that it has changed. I'm not as Korean by today's cultural standards as, as I thought I was mm -hmm. or as I thought I would be. It's a little harder to assimilate into, yeah. I guess, the norm of what it means to be Korean here. So that's that's what has changed for me. Mm -mm. You know, something funny, when I was flying on the plane to come live here, this is before just visiting, when I was, I knew, okay, I'm going to live in Korea. I, I remember I had talked to another friend, he's Kyopo, and he had said, oh yeah, you know, for me, the first time I moved to Korea, I felt such an amazing feeling of being one with everyone. <laughs> he's like, I stepped off that plane and all I saw were a bunch of people who looked like me and I'd never experienced that in my life. And he was like, it was the coolest feeling when I got mm -hmm. into Incheon Airport and I saw all these guys who were my height, who had my skin tone, who had my kind of eyes, my kind of hair. And he said, and it was just such a freeing feeling yeah. to be able to walk into that crowd and nobody was right. pointing me out. Right. So I remember him telling me that and I was sitting on the plane. I was getting really excited 
Honestly, I never lived in Seoul before. And I was like, wow, this is, you know, this is going to be different. I'm, I'm finally going to be just part of the crowd. I can't wait to just <laughs> swim along with the rest of the fishies. Uh -huh. And I was in for such a rude awakening because when I landed, nobody thought I was Korean mm -hmm. at all. And it was, I guess, from then on, in a way, it, you know, it wasn't a crisis I think now I say it wasn't a crisis. Back then, I certainly felt like it was. But a total sense of just crumbling self, I guess, uh, love. Because I just thought, oh my gosh, I'm, I am such an alien. And I felt like I had to always prove myself. And that was a big reason why I studied Korean so hard. Because language is sort of... Um, It's sort of like a key to that proves to people, hey, I've, I've got a key as mm -hmm. well, right? And so it unlocks these doors between you and there's more acceptance. But without that language key, I really struggled a lot with feeling like I can fit in here. Yeah. Like people aren't going to just consider me, write me off as a stranger. And that was the last thing I wanted. I wanted to be just flowing in with the crowd and feeling that freedom. Mm. But from day one, I never have. Right. So it was kind of like, I don't know. It's a bit, a bit odd. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would imagine that you and I would agree to say that we've never felt like we've blended in mm -hmm. in any context that we've been in. Generally, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I feel like I blend in a little bit more in the states, depending on where I live. Yeah. But I mean, really, I, even in North Carolina, I, I didn't really blend in. We were just more used to like different cultures and mm -hmm. different ethnic groups there. Mm -hmm. But I was still not part of the majority. Yeah. And definitely when I moved to New Jersey, because I moved to K-Town, essentially. Yeah. So so I've always had this feeling of, oh, I know I look different. <laughs> so I don't know what it feels like to be blended in, mm. in a, I don't know, in a, in a city or in a geographical location or in a yeah. culture. I have no idea what that actually feels like. Yeah, and it's a funny thing, too, because it's like, at least so in my case, it was really sad. <laughs> I was like, so sad. I don't fit in. I worked really, really, really hard. I really hard. And by this, I mean, there is a period where I tried so hard to look as Korean as I possibly could. I thought, this is what Korean girls wear. This is the mm -hmm. kind of haircut that they have. These are the glasses that Korean girls wear. If I wear these glasses, I can pass. I can look more Korean. People aren't going to look at me funny. It was to that extent where I had this you know, shaken of self-acceptance and, and knowing who I was. When, when was that? Was that like oh, when you first came? I would say that was during my university years mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. And so just, you know, feeling mm. that very intensely. I wanted that so badly. And then I was kind of like this going in. And, and then there was at some point where I think you just get tired of that. And you just decide, actually, I like myself. And... You know, I'm not going to. I, I was looking so hard to fit in here. I want to be that that final piece of the puzzle and belong in the puzzle. But I it just nothing ever fit the right. shapes. And so after a while, you, I think I just got tired and I just matured and I thought a lot about it. And so I reached the opposite end of the spectrum. I was like, you know what? I don't care. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I don't care what you think about me. And I remember being very um, impressed with this girl I saw once in the sh in the shoe store because i would go to shoe stores this is way back when i'd go to shoe stores and i would try to speak in korean to the shopkeeper and they would always try to speak to me in english and i was like no i'm just speaking in <laughs> korean this one girl came in and she was kyopo and she comes in and she says in english very firmly she says i'm looking for size eight in u.s what size is that in korean and she just she just spoke very bluntly she tried to prove her americanness i know and, and so i remember looking at her and for me who was so insecure i was like wow That is so cool. Yeah, just whatever. Mm -hmm. You don't speak Korean. You don't have to prove anything. But I also don't think that is the answer. At least it wasn't in my case. Right. But, it, you know, kind of veered opposite side where it was so intensely like, yeah, I'm not. Actually, you know, I'm not Korean. You know, don't even don't even call me Korean. I have no connection here. But that is also not the answer. This denial. And that's why, you know, finding this this middle ground, this study of self and culture, at least for us, is very important to not ask for acceptance by the society but to accept yourself mm -hmm. and that is what the journey has been like for me right mm -hmm. wow yeah i you know honestly i feel like you might be maybe a step or two ahead of me in that because i mean one you've been here longer but two you've i think you've had time to really process that where i'm still processing it because i'm 
it's funny. I I feel like now that I've been here three years, I'm I feel not more confused about how I should look at myself or how I should interact with people here. But I still haven't quite figured it out. On one hand, I'm totally confident in who I am. I'm totally confident and wouldn't want to change that for the world. On the other hand, it's just like this. Just, it's always like I I know I'm I'm different, and it's just that nagging little mm. thing in my mind. Mm-hmm. And you know, I I understand that it could be easy for people to hear us talking about you know how we. It might seem like we're overly concerned about the perception of people. Yeah. But you have to understand. If you don't understand, you have to understand that um, that I think as humans, we're we're supposed like we have this innate desire to feel belong. Mm-hmm. Like we're part of a group. Mm-mm. Like we're not different. We're all the same. And when you grow up feeling like you're always pointed out, then I think that does something to you subconsciously. And for me, like I'm not complaining about it. You know, I just, I just know that there's just like this unresolved emotion or something Yeah, that I'm still trying to figure out. Now, that being said, it's not like this major thing where I'm like, I feel like I'm in an identity crisis because I feel like I know exactly who I am. You are lucky. I went through that for years. Oh yeah? No. So like, I, like I accept myself. Mm -hmm. Let's put it like that. Mm -hmm. I think I realized that I accept myself. But I also still have this feeling of I want other people to accept me. Yeah. Not as other, but as as one of them. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's where I am Mm -hmm. right now. In a way, um, uh, I feel like I've reached this imposter syndrome stage. Like to give an example, I was in the studio because I do recordings and I was in the studio. And every time I go in the studio, when I meet a new director, they're always like, Oh, she speaks Korean so well. And I can hear them on the mic in my earphones. I'm like, okay, right. And so I hear them talking amongst themselves like, oh, do you want to speak to her? I'll speak to you in Korean. Then you tell her in English. You're better English than I am anyway. And I'm just so frustrated. And they can't hear me in the studio room till they push the speaker button. So I just wait and wait and wait. And then they're like, okay, you know what? Yeah, you translate for me. Then speak to me in Korean. And it's very like slow and punctuated. (laughs) And I'm like, it's okay. You can just speak to me very comfortably. And they're like, oh my gosh. I didn't know she spoke Korean. That is always how the conversation goes. Some days, it doesn't bother me. But um, what was interesting about this recent recording is that there was another girl in the room who I know, and uh, we've worked together, and uh, she's Korean. And so when the director was going through the whole like, oh my gosh, I don't know she speaks Korean. Wow. That girl cut him off so fast and said, she's Korean, just like that. Mm -hmm. Now, I had two conflicting feelings in this moment. Mm -hmm. My first one was gratitude. Was it was like, thank you. I need you to stand up for me. Doesn't matter what I say until one of them says that about me to belong with them. Mm -hmm. So on on one hand, I felt gratitude. On the other hand, I felt this weird feeling of like, yeah, but I'm not, you know? And so it's kind of like, oh, am I faking it? Like, you know, you know, I'm not fully Korean. You're aware. I mean, thank you for standing up for me. And, but now I don't know what space I inhabit. You know, because the director doesn't think I'm Korean, yet you have put him in his place. She's Korean. But now it kind of forces these two uh, diametrically opposed concepts of she's not Korean, she is Korean, and pretending like she is. And it just, it made me feel strange. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I can relate to that. Yeah, so I I also don't know if that's the answer. Because sometimes we'll see comments, especially from our Korean subscribers, who will say like, why do you say 혼혈이라고 왜, you know, why do you say you're 혼혈? 그냥 한국인이잖아. You're just Korean. We've mentioned this before, but it is also a bit of glossing over or a sense of denial to, to some very important aspects mm-hmm. of who you are. And so, honestly, it's no wonder that we're constantly asking these questions and delving into it and having these discussions because understanding the self is not easy as it is. And then we add on to a couple more complex layers and people on this side and people on that side. And then also maybe not having the right space to talk about it openly mm-hmm. can, of course, lead to some questions right. that you might have. Yeah. I just think that culture and community is is a very nuanced thing. And just when when we're feeling a certain way, it's it's because of those nuances that we... 
I don't know. It's because of those nuances where, where we could feel maybe discouraged or we could feel like we're not a part. And it's hard for people who may not, who may just be like a white person who's in their white community or a black person in their black community. You, it's just hard to feel that. But when you're always just not part of any community fully and you know that the community that you're at least kind of part of looks at you differently. Like it, it just does something to you. And I, I don't think it's a bad thing that we feel this way. I Mm -hmm. don't think that we should be shamed for feeling this Mm -hmm. way because as human beings, we just need to feel like we belong to a group. That's why people need other people. You know what I mean? Like you don't shame anyone for feeling lonely when they don't have any friends. It's a natural thing to want to have friends. Mm-hmm. It's a natural thing for us to want to belong to what makes up who we are. Yeah. On either side. Yeah. Yeah. So, so again, that's just maybe um, I don't know a word of encouragement to people who may not under- understand when we say these things because the the tendency and people say this in good faith and they also say this uh, to encourage like hey don't worry about what people think yes you know what I mean like just. <laughs> Just do you. You're right. Let me go to the magical land where there's many people who look just like me. (laughs) Right. (laughs) So that's just an encouragement for people out there who may not understand why we feel this way. That's that's a little bit of insight of of why. And we're working through it. And yes, we understand by the book that we don't need to feel this way. Mm -hmm. But I think because we are human beings and the nuances of culture, we do feel this way and it's okay. Yeah. And we're working through it and figuring out and navigating how to feel and how to function. That's right. That's that's really the end point. It's okay. Yeah. To have these questions, it's okay to talk about it. And that goes for both people, both types of people. Those who are asking these questions about themselves and feeling like, "Ooh, is this really what I'm is this, am I going crazy or do I have a right to ask these questions?" It's okay to ask. And also on the flip side, those who are saying, "I'm so tired of people who talk about mixed race identity. Why don't you guys just get over it?" Those kind of people too, I would just say, maybe a little grace and compassion. Yeah, or a lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> That's all that I have to say on that point. But um, this is obviously a very uh, many-layered conversation. So it can continue. And if you guys want to ask your own questions, we might do another Q&A episode at some point. Um, you can definitely get in touch with us. And because I said that, that means it's listener mail time. All right. I'm going to read one here. Uh, okay, here we go. Ready? So, um, this is from James and James says, Hey guys, I really appreciate you guys creating content, discussing racism within the United States via the podcast and YouTube. I lived in the U S for about 24 years. Absolutely resonate with every topic you've covered. Despite me being a Korean born naturalized Korean American, I completely understand what you guys go through. It's a shame that we will never be fully accepted as a true Korean because we possess a foreign passport. In my perspective, we are both Korean and Americans. I remember when I returned to Incheon, assimilation was tough, and I battled with an identity crisis the first year that I lived here. I eventually adjusted to the Korean way of life after years of living and working here. I watch the Happy Project videos when I'm feeling down from time to time. You guys made me proud of my background. Keep up the great content, and thank you so much. Warm regards, James. Man, thank you, James. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and that's interesting because not only half Koreans and mixed uh, like biracial or multicultural people face these things, but also like, um, you know, people who are born in one country, maybe immigrate overseas. Mm -hmm. They might have the same sort of feelings of otherness and acceptance. And uh, yeah, I just, I just really appreciate that, that you would share that James. And yeah, we, we were rooting for you. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much for listening and writing in. So, um, you know, it's impossible to wrap up this huge topic with one little ribbon, but I would just say maybe a little compassion and grace for each other. That's it. That's it. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. You can get in touch at the happy project at gmail talk. <laughs> <Ta-ka. laughs> you can get in touch at the happy project at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for listening. We are the happy project.